everybody, my name's Kimberly, and this is Off-Road Reactions. And today I'm bringing you a little bit of a different video. I can tell by the title, but once again, this is a video that I haven't watched. And this one comes to us from Work, oh, sorry, Walker Bend is the name of the channel. And the title of the video is Darrow's Bogged in the Simpson Desert. So for those of you not from Australia who maybe don't use the word Darrow's, um, typically it's used uh, to describe a vagrant, someone dependent on alcohol in particular. But in this case, I think it probably means a bit more like Yobbo, a bit of a redneck. So... <clears throat> Let's have a look at this video and uh, see what it's all about, shall we? <laughs> all right, well, I'm going to stop it straight away because uh, this is uh, kind of ridiculous. One, look at that load. Oh, my God. Yeah, all right. <clears throat> but the main point is this is the Simpson Desert and we are between dunes. Uh, having done the Simpson Desert 24 times, I'm pretty certain this is the eastern end of the WIA line somewhere near the North Track. Uh, just by looking at the height of the dune right next to the uh, clay pan. Um, and I think I've mentioned in other videos, but the rule of thumb in the sand dune country is don't drive through the water when there's a perfectly good dry sand dune or perfectly good, in this case, dry tracks all around everywhere. Why you would drive through the mud, uh, I have absolutely no idea. And looking at the comments on this video, it says that not bad effort considering he drove the last part in two-wheel drive. So I'm assuming he's in two-wheel drive right now. So double demerit points. Why drive into a very clear bog uh, in two-wheel drive? Uh, hilarious. I used to have a boss who used to say, I like to keep four-wheel drive up my sleeve. I wait until I'm bogged to use it. Let me tell you, it's too late then. <laughs> Oh, 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 Dave, I think you're going to have to get your feet money, mate. Why, where are you going? I'm going to hook it straight over the toe ball. Oh, dear. So I'm assuming we're going to hook a snatch strap over the top of a toe ball. These really are yobos. Do not ever put a snatch strap on a toe ball. The leverage will snap the toe ball off and it makes an excellent cannonball. And yes, people have been killed by them. Uh, wow. No, please don't do it. Um, secondly, um, no, I'll, I'll see what happens first and I'll, and I'll talk about recovery procedures. Uh. And then these perfectly dry tracks around that fog. Amazing. Why drive in there? I think I know you're over two months. So it's, it's one, it's, it's attached to the hook on the front of this other vehicle. So once again, another problem here. Let me stop the video for a second. So they're doing everything wrong. They drove into the bog when there's a dry track around it. They are going to put a snatch strap over the top of a tie ball. And they've got the snatch strap hooked to the front of the recovery vehicle on the hook. What's wrong with that? Nothing wrong with where they've attached it. What's wrong is the direction that the vehicle is going. Don't snatch in reverse. The reverse is not very strong compared to other gears in a gearbox. Just don't 
snatch in reverse. Now they may be going to do a gentle toe, and that's where I was going to talk about the hierarchy of recovery. So hierarchy of recovery is as follows: vehicle and vehicle and track preparation first. So in this instance, the vehicle preparation would be make sure it's four-wheel drive, and if it's not, don't go anywhere where you need four-wheel drive. Two, track preparation in this case is avoid the boggy bit. <laughs> That's as simple as it gets, right? And then the hierarchy of uh, recovery is use the safest method first. And the safest method is to further modify the track, use recovery boards or something similar. Now, recovery boards in this sloppy condition is going to be awful and horrible. So I forgive people if they're not going to use that option. But the next best option would be a winch. Um, there's not a lot to winch off, but they've got multiple vehicles, so that could be done. Wow. Talk about, hey, this is a great lesson. What not to do in the Simpson Desert? And it also looks like the cruiser hasn't got a sand plane. Go for a paddle, Dave. Don't slip in. Yeah, we're going to put a snow over a toggle. Never, ever, ever do that, people. Don't ever do it. So what do you do? You pull the hitch out of the hitch receiver. You pull the tongue assembly out of the receiver on the tow bar, and you put the eye of the um, snap strap into the receiver, and you put the pin through the snap strap eye and then pin it with the arc tip. The pin is much more suited to that job than the tow ball is. Much, much, much more suited. And don't snatch in your desk. Oh, and <laughs> this is a lesson on what to do wrong. Before you do anything, everybody needs to be one and a half times the length of the snatch strap away at 90 degrees. There's a guy standing next to the cruiser. He could easily wear a bull bar or a tow ball, and there have been kids and adults killed by bull bars being torn off vehicles. Stand at least 1.5 meters, 1.5 times the length of the strap away at 90 degrees if possible. Wow. This is both funny and dangerous. Also, don't have the recovering vehicle in the slop. If you're going to do a snatch recovery in this situation, oh, dear me, use two snatch straps joined together like this. If you don't know how to join snatch straps, go and do a four drive course and uh, turn this vehicle around the other way. Put both strap eyes in the tow uh, bar uh, hitch receivers with the pin and Snatch this car, you know, have this car going forwards and have it on dry ground. This is craziness. If you'd like to learn how to do this properly, or you'd like to travel the Simpson Desert, go and check out Olsen's Tours and Training. Thank you. Oh, I can pull that tow ball off. That tow ball will go through the windscreen, through the back of the window. If it doesn't go through somebody's head first. Okay, now, see, this guy can't get any traction. He's in the slot, the, the other guy, the, the one that's doing the recovery. This guy is going to get killed. The other thing I noticed, he, he really is into a dive, as far as I can tell. It looks like it's only the back wheels work. This guy's snatching uphill as well. He might be better off going around the other side with multiple snatch straps. Oh, he's on dry ground at last. <laughs> he's, got, he's on dry ground, but he's pulling sideways. Uh, this is hilarious. Everyone's so 
Oh, we got the winch out. We got the winch out now at last. Oh, hooray. Only, I think we're, we're feeding the rope out using the electric. I think that's what's happening here. Uh, I think he is. I think he's got a hook to the other car and the other car is backing out. Okay. <laughs> Don't feed your rope out using the winch. You get the winch hot for no reason. It's got a clutch. Let go of the clutch. Pull the rope out by hand with gloves on if it's steel rope. Oh, my God. I want a lesson in how to do it wrong. You might be pulling the rope up. I could be wrong. Oh, oh, now we got... Yeah, well, if you're going to winch him, that's a good idea. No, no, don't fall like that. Oh. <sighs> Can't do motion. Okay. You might think if I'm winching the vehicle, if, the, if I'm winching from the bogged vehicle onto two stationary vehicles, um, then that's the same if I got those two vehicles to move, right? That will be the same thing. No, it's not. Because what will happen is if the Toyota that's bogged recovers a bit and then slips back into a hole or these vehicles uh, tug suddenly on the wire, you shock load the winch. The winch isn't designed for shock load. Now, in emergency situations, in a kind of life-saving situation, I have done something similar on a, on a slope, and I'll tell you what happens. It breaks the winch. The winch housing in which the drum rides is not very strong at all, uh, not for shock waves. Uh, so if you can avoid it, don't do what these guys are doing. Don't tow using the winch rope unless it's absolutely your last resort. What would have been better here is for both of these vehicles to be in... Um, Low range four wheel drive, uh, reverse gear, um, and then switch them off. So put them in a low range four wheel drive, reverse gear, switch them off with, and then put the handbrakes on and have the foot brake on with the clutch out. And then have the two vehicles or more than two vehicles tied together. And then have the Toyota do the winching off those two stationary vehicles. Obviously, there's no trees to winch off in the Simpson Desert, but you can use a boat anchor, you can use uh, a buried tyre, and you can use, believe it or not, five or six steel fence posts that you can carry around. Now, this is not a good idea. Oh, last resort, yeah, but not a good idea. You will break the winch. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's not a good idea. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's there's a guy standing there. Oh dear, uh, we're smart enough to put a damper on the winch rope in case it breaks, but we're not smart enough to stand out of the way. <laughs> this fellow should be in the car or behind the door. Uh, and when we're using the stat strap, we should be one and a half times the length of the stat strap away. Uh, this is actually one of the smaller clay pans. I was about, I was wrong about where it is, but. Uh, Oh dear. Oh, we're moving it at least. Oh, we got a flat tire too. Now yeah, we're fighting the second. I just want to. Oh, there you go. I think we broke the winch. <laughs> Oh, that's hilarious. Have we run, run over the winch cable too? <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. Well, that was a lot of fun.